Good morning, modern statters. It's a nice, brisk nine degrees out this morning. I don't know about you, but I like waking up bright and early in the morning. I get up about 4 a.m. and it was 15 degrees out this morning at four. And now that it's finally light out, it is nine degrees out. I just think that's so crazy how it can drop that fast in temperature, guys. Oh, that being said, I am glad we made our beef jerky yesterday in the smoker. It was like 30 degrees yesterday. So if it was nine degrees and we were trying to make jerky in the outdoor smoker, it would have taken a lot longer to keep everything up to temperature. So today we got a nice indoor project in the workshop. By the title of the video, yes, we bought 20,000 rare bees. We'll get to that after chores. <laughs> Yeah, now we gotta get the homestead ready for these 20,000 bees, y'all. I am so looking forward to having bees again on the homestead. We got some rare bees coming, and we have a pretty cool hive box that we're gonna be working on building. So you guys are gonna wanna stay tuned for that. Let's get these animals fed and watered. Oh, showing they're pretty good this morning. I'll get the boys some sunflower seeds. Oh, I will say it's that time of the year where we're starting to get daylight and it's getting brighter earlier in the morning. I love it. That means spring is coming. I know we still got like another month or two, but whoa, it's gonna be here before you know it. And that means babies, gardening, piglets, so much to do. I love it. Good morning, boys. What do you think, Tanner? They smell or do you kind of like them? Little man, you gotta get up, pick a side. There you go. There you go. Oh, is Caleb your buddy? He's gotta be on the side you're on there, little man. I think so. We're in the planning stages of a couple of big projects right now. I'm hoping within like a week or two, I'll have more to share with you. Oh, now these are gonna be some good ones, guys. Totally different than what we did last year, but something we need on the homestead. And I think a lot of you will like it. You've been saying it for Probably some of you have been saying it for a couple of years that we need to do one of them. So it's gonna be good. The way the boys are acting this morning, there might be another female goat in heat. I'm hoping it's just hope. Good morning, girls. Is somebody back in heat, huh? The boys are pretty noisy. Somebody in heat? I don't think so, I hope not. Let's go. We gotta go to the feeder. The feeder, girls, the feeder. Quick, Tanner's up there. Go ahead, if you're fairly fast about it, Tanner won't even see you. Oh, you made it. Where you going? Get going, come on, the feeder. They're gonna run down there, touch the feeder, and they're gonna come back and try tripping me up. Ready, tag the feeder, here we go, and then they come right back. No, stay down there. Stay down there and wait. There you go, we gotta get you trained. Oh man, these silly goats. Ouch, whacked you right in the head. You walked under the grain cup. There you go. Little pig. Quit being a pain in the butt. There you go. I'm thinking we might put a two by four on edge, probably this height, to keep little P out attached here. I might make it so she can't get up there, but I wanna make sure wherever we put it doesn't interfere with them eating or whacking their heads. So I'm thinking maybe like at this height, but that might not deter her. I think it's crazy how warm the girls can keep it in this barn. That water. It's not frozen, and it's nine degrees out right now. It was 15. So that's awesome that they're able to generate that much body heat and keep that stall that warm. This wall's insulated, this wall's not, that wall's not insulated, and the wall going to the milking room is insulated. You got your stick? Come on, don't oh, get your stick. Oh, he finds a new one every time we go outside. Look at that sunrise, beautiful over the mountains. 
Morning peeps, ready for breakfast. Morning moose. Even the birds are a little frisky this morning. Look at you and your fancy pencil holder. Now you can keep track of your own pencil. Don't be stealing mine. <laughs> Can't guarantee anything. I'll be like, where's my pencil? Oh yeah. It's okay. Right. You're like, where's my pencil? And I'll be like, I don't know, what you doing with it? <laughs> All that. Sun feels good. I think you gotta move over a little bit though. It's blinding us. So we just bought 20,000 rare bees on the internet. We're gonna go pick them up in April. So we've had bees in the past. When we lived in Massachusetts, we had them down there. We had really good luck. We ended up getting a five gallon pail of honey from one beehive that season. Then we brought them up here. They didn't overwinter. No. So we've tried, when we were in Mass, we had a Langstroth hive and we had a top bar beehive. There was pros and cons for both of them. The top bar beehive was great, but for our climate, it's not gonna work up in Northern New Hampshire now. It's way too thin, it doesn't stay warm enough. And That's then, the one that we built for Olivia. Yes, it's the yellow one that we had for so Olivia. So that was neat for Olivia to be able to see like all the stuff around because we made a plexiglass so she could, kind of like a hand farm. Right, Yeah. she could watch the bees. But it's not, it's great I think if you're in a warm climate, for our cold climate, it's not good. The Langstroth hive, which is like the regular boxes, they work good. For our climate, they're still not perfect, but also you have a lot of bending over and picking up to get in there to check the bees. You gotta destroy the whole hive basically and check it. So we're gonna build a Langstroth hive, but it's gonna be horizontal. So that it'll be like a top bar, but a Langstroth. So you can, you'll have your frames in there, you can pull them out, you can check them. We're gonna build them on a thick lumber so it'll stay warmer and we can actually insulate it. We're gonna make an insulated top for it. And we're gonna make an insulated bottom, we're going to do a couple of other things. So that's going to be, this video series is going to be on building the beehive. So it'll be probably about a three-part series. The bees that we're getting there, I'm going to put the name of the, the I'm going to put the name of the bees right here, because I'm going to butcher it, but they're from Saskatchewan, Canada. They're supposed to be really good honey producers, and they're supposed to overwinter really well. So what I liked about that is, we're in northern New Hampshire, so we're not far from Canada. So if they have a bee that's from Canada that can overwinter, I was like, yes, and then to find out that they're really good honey producers and they're supposed to be a gentle bee, I was like, perfect. So we've got two nukes coming, and in each nuke, which is basically a small beehive, it's a five frame beehive, there'll be about 10,000 bees and a queen in each one. So we're gonna be getting 20,000 bees in April. So, exciting. I hope that Olivia gets interested in it again. I don't, when we mentioned to her, she was kinda like, hmm. I think she will, because these hives, are. Well, well, we'll get them built and I'll show you, but they're more interactive you can get them really easily and it's not as much as like the other style. Yeah, I just know before we had bees, she just loved it and she had a little yeah. bee suit on. She had her bee suit. We had, she got a cool bee book. Yeah. Hopefully she still fits into her bee suit because that was... Right. I bet she still fits in her. It, it was, was really big. big. It was big. So, yeah. Alright, so let me bring you over here and I'll show you the beehive I'm building. The plans that we're going by are from horizontalhive.com. I'll have a link in the video description down below. But I am changing them up a little bit. So I'm just using these as a guide and then we're gonna modify it. So let's get started. All right. I went to our favorite store the other day and I picked up two 12 foot long two by 12s two 10 foot long two by fours, a sheet of half inch plywood, and one sheet of one inch thick styrofoam foam. Right, styrofoam foam, it's foam. Yeah, yeah, it is. And that's pretty much all we're gonna need to build two hives and the tops. And then I had to buy a roll of wire. I got that in the house, I'll show that tomorrow. Let's get this stuff inside and ready to start making our two hive kits. Ah. Let's see how we can get these in without opening the garage door.
right, so we got to cut four pieces out of our two by 12 at 47 and 13 16. So we're going to take two out of each board. All right, so we need to cut four of them total at 47 and 13 16. Oh, we get to try our new light today, too. How come you don't have your handy dancing pencils? Let me turn this on for you. Bam! <laughs> for now and then we're gonna make some dado cuts some rabbit cuts in these 2x12s to get them ready for the top and the bottom Figures in the last one, we get it like I get it nice and dialed in and perfect. It's the way it always goes. Then we need to set our table saw up to three quarters of an inch to the outside of the saw blade, and then three eighths of an inch deep. Go up three quarters of an inch and then in three eighths, like so. of an inch. Hindsight being 20-20, instead of going a quarter inch deep with this dado, I should have went three eighths. And then it would have matched right here and we wouldn't have this little step down. So if I make them again, I will do that. So the hive overall needs to be 21 and three eighths wide. So our side end pieces need to be 18 and seven eighths. What color are we gonna paint these beehives after? We're gonna leave them wood, or are you gonna paint them fancy? You don't have to paint them. No, I know, but I know. If you'd paint and want to paint them some color, we have a bunch of that paint in the basement. The bright colors. Yeah. 
You could paint them fancy. They'll make like, like sayings on each side, like it's like bees, and then it's like a beautiful day, and then it'll be like, let your beauty shine through. Right. I don't know. Be unique. Alright, so now we gotta go 9 16 by 9 16 to the outside of the blade. That part was easy. Now we gotta do it on these ones. Well, that should be it for the fun, exciting cuts. I know you're disappointed about that. Good thing it's not in the kitchen, it's in the workshop. I am going a little overboard with the screws. We are using <coughs> RSS rugged structural screws, but these being two by 12s and they're, they warp really easy. I wanna make sure we have a good solid wide head to suck everything together and keep it from warping. You probably could just use a deck screw, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Haven't needed it, have you? I went and I grabbed some of our hive frames. These ones have honeycomb built up in them. The bees never made honey in them, but they put the honeycomb in them. And they fit perfectly into the box. So that top dado that we cut into the, just on the two long ones is the top. We can set all of our frames in here. These are the small frames. You can get standard ones and large ones. We'll get the standard ones to put in here. But I just wanted to show you how it works. 
it'll hold 31 frames in here. So you'll have like your standard box that you're, or you'll, you'll have your standard frames here and there'll be so many that the bees and the queen stayed in. And then they'll come out here and they'll stop filling up more honey. And you have to keep adding boxes to the Langstroths when they get more honey. Well, in here, you can come in and be like, oh, look, this one's full of honey and it's capped. You can take it out and then stick in another frame. Instead of building higher and higher, longer and longer, you can just keep taking a frame out and then just set it aside in your house and save them until you're ready to spin them. So that's what we'll do there. Oh, I forgot how good those smell. You got such a distinctive smell. Mm, that smells good. It smells delicious. So tomorrow we'll work on a little bit more of the box. We gotta do the legs, we gotta make the bottom. We got a special compartment for hive mites, so we don't have to worry about those. And we gotta build a top for it. What do they do in the other um, beehives for mites? They just fall out and then fall on the ground if you got a screen bottom. So this one we're gonna have a screen bottom, but we're gonna have a tray under it and then the tray will hold. Well, I'll talk about that in tomorrow's video. I don't wanna give it all away. This is a special thing for killing the mites naturally that this hive has. And you're gonna make me wait till tomorrow? I'm gonna make you wait till tomorrow. We don't wanna give it away. Do you think the goats are gonna be nice and frisky today like they were yesterday? Maybe. Maybe. I would think they'd be more active today because it's sunny out, but I'm gonna say just because we think they will be, they won't be. Right. But I, think that, I, think, I thought that was funny yesterday. It was funny. They're over there. Especially little peas. Yeah. I think only five or either four or five eggs. Four or five. Oh, now, you, now you're picking a range. 4.5. I'll say three. Because yesterday we got six. Yesterday we got six, so I'm saying three. One, two, three. Yeah, three. What are your goats doing? Did you eat all the hay? Hey, look at that. We got our first goat turds in the bus stop. Yeah. Our first set of fresh goat turds. And they've been playing on it. What? Did you poop in the goat stop? Huh? Was that you who pooped in the goat stop? You girls chewing your cud? Is that delicious or what? Maggie? Daddy. Little P. Gonna get you some more hay for the feeder. Go ahead, spunky monkeys. Don't let Tanner stop you. Jack's like Willow. Oh. Right. Is that like three the hay right there? I think it's two. <laughs> there you go. No, we gotta go to the boys, then we gotta bring in the mule. <laughs> Buttercup, you're fresh. We're gonna have some pizza tonight, so we gotta think ahead and get our dough ready, cause I need to sit up for about two hours, it doubles in size, and then it needs to get punched down, and then we wait 20 minutes or so to get ready to get on our, on our pizza pan. So we got warm water. One tablespoon of yeast. My hands are clean. And a pinch of sugar. And let that sit there for five minutes. 
when we're waiting for that to set for five minutes i'm going to go ahead and get my um, bowl of oil Right now we gotta get our hook on here. Put it on medium for about five minutes. Got my oil bowl. Just gonna transfer this in. Plastic wrap on. I hate plastic wrap, but it works for this. And my towel. I'm gonna let it sit there for about two hours, and then punch it down. Have I made you mad yet today? Not yet. Not yet. Well, you don't have any aggression to take out, do you? No, but I'll do it just in case. Okay. So this Let's is like this, this is like a freebie. So when I aggravate you, you already got the aggression taken Ready? out. Look how big it is. Okay. Whoa. How many times does it punch it? I think that's good. She's deflated. Is that fun? Yep. <laughs> Get our topping ready. I'm really excited about this. Don't burn yourself, Tanner. Extra mushrooms in her half. Feel the breeze. Come walk with me. Oh, and dance. Come dance with me. Shut for your feet. Come dance with me. And I will tell you when you're older how I loved you just the same. It never matters where we're going. It never matters. Looks delish. I'll let you take it out.
gets you down Steals your crown And breaks your will Oh, well, I, I'll pick you up Brush off the dust And hold you still I will tell you when you're older How I loved you I don't know about you, but we are surely excited to be getting 20,000 bees back on the homestead. Oh, we had them once. We had, well, we had them once, but we had them for two seasons in mass. And then when we brought them up here after the really good season, we didn't have any luck. They've made it through the summer, but then come wintertime, they didn't overwinter. We didn't get any honey off of them that year either. So we are looking forward to this. I am looking forward to this new breed of bee we are trying. I'm not going to try to say that name again. Leave it in the comments down below if you know how to pronounce it, because I don't. But man, it's so exciting. I'm going to leave a link in the video description down below for the link of the beehives we are building. I think if you guys stay following along in this whole beehive building journey with us, you'll see what we're building, why we're building it. And it, to me, it just makes a lot of sense. I'm like, yes, the bees are going to love this. Bees naturally live in a log. So this is more of like a log in my head anyway. So keep following along. We probably got two more videos in this series. It's gonna be a good one. And then we get to get bees in April, I know. But it'll be here before you know it. We gotta get this project done because we have a lot of stuff going on. We got quite a few projects going on. I'm in the works of getting two or three more lined up. So it's a busy, busy time of the year getting ready for spring. So thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey, guys. I hope this inspires you for your homestead, for your plans to dream. Cause man, every time I do something or see somebody else doing something, it just sparks more ideas in me. And I just love that. So thanks for coming along on our journey with us guys. You are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. And we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres.